All right, so up to this point, we talked about how to calculate, well, we talked about significant digits, which is good and important. We talked about how to calculate the mass of a molecule in atomic mass units. And we talked about the mole and what it means to have a certain number of something and how that relates to a mole. Remember that that's related to Avogadro's number, which is 6.022 times 10 to the 23. Okay, so we got two moles. We've been able to bundle these small particles and atoms into moles. But how does that help us? Well, the way it helps us is because scientists are very clever. And the, what they have done is they have found a way to make the mole, and Avogadro's number specifically, um, allows us to relate these masses of atoms and molecules to more units that are used on an everyday basis. For example, if I were to go over to that balance over there, the scale, and weigh out some salts, sodium chloride, NaCl. Look, here's some salt right here. If I were to go weigh some out, I would weigh it out, and I'd probably measure it in units of grams. Grams is a very easy unit to understand. Grams um, is the unit for mass, and we use grams every day. In fact, most chemical calculations we do are in some form of a gram, kilograms or milligrams, but usually grams is what we use to measure out that mass. And that's an easy way to measure out a certain amount of something, is by its mass in grams. Well, it's hard to measure out the grams of something in terms of like atomic mass units uh, because one atomic mass unit is approximately, and I'm estimating here, but it's something like 1 times 10 to the negative 23rd grams. They're very, very small, or uh, atomic mass unit weighs a very small amount compared to a gram. So we would rather measure them in terms of moles to get these really large bundles. And then we can see how much each bundle weighs in grams, because now I've got a large amount. So you could imagine that this amount of water that's in this container, it might weigh like a, some amount of grams, maybe like 10 grams or 18 grams. In fact, it weighs 18 grams almost exactly. And that's what the idea of molar mass is. So we've been using these numbers of atomic mass units, the units rather, of atomic mass units. We're basically scrapping that and now we're going to talk about new units for molar mass. So remember that hydrogen has a mass of 1.01, and we said atomic mass units. The molar mass of hydrogen is 1.01 grams per mole. I'm going to write that like this, but what this means is grams per mole. And here's why that is important. That means if I have a mole of hydrogen atoms, aka if I have 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd hydrogen atoms, I know that that many hydrogen atoms weighs exactly what the atomic mass is on the periodic table, 1.01. .01. And you might be thinking, how do I know that? And once again, it's because scientists are clever. That's how this number became this number. It looks like a random number, but that's why it's not random. It's to get the number of grams of a mole of something to be the same just value as its atomic mass on the periodic table. And this works for every single element and thereby every single molecule. So I had water in that container. And I told you that it was pretty much exactly one mole of water. And the reason I know that is because I know the molar mass of water. Remember that hydrogen is 1.01 .01 atomic mass unit, which now we're going to write as 1.01 .01 grams per mole. That means, and the abbreviation for mole is MOL, so sorry about that. Um, that means in one mole of hydrogen, I have 1.01 .01 grams. For oxygen, you can just look at the periodic table and see that its molar mass is 16.00, 16.00 grams per mole. So that means if I wanted to find the molar mass of water, we can do the same thing we did to find the mass of water. It's going to be two hydrogens and one oxygen, 
it's going to be 2 times 1.01 plus 16.00, which is going to equal, with significant digits, of course, 18.02. But my units are now just going to be grams per mole. Grams per mole. That's how much one mole of water weighs. And that's how I know that there's a mole of water in here, is because this amount of water weighs 18.02 grams. I can literally go to a balance or a scale and weigh it out. And you can do this too. If you have a balance or a scale at home, like a food, like a kitchen kind of food balance, it usually weighs things in grams. You could weigh out some water in a dish, assuming you tear the balance and make it set to zero. And if you weigh out 18.02 grams of water, you would have one mole of water. And in fact, you could figure out exactly how many moles of water, and you could estimate how many particles of water you have by using molar mass. Because look at these units, grams per mole. That looks like a conversion vector. It's because it is. Grams divided by moles or moles divided by grams. In fact, it's always one mole, and it's always some number of grams. The molar mass for all of these different atoms and molecules is going to be different because they all have different weights. But it's the exact same as finding the mass of the molecules we had before. So let's just use water as an example. And we can see how this works. Let's say I weigh out um, 18 grams of water. 18 grams of H2O. And we, I know that this is kind of like the molar mass, which is why I picked that number. You can go to a balance and weigh out 18 grams of water. And I want to know how many molecules of water is that. Let's write it like conversion factors. So to go from grams to molecules, well, first I need to go through moles. And we can use the molar mass of water to do that. So I'll have 18.02 grams of H2O in every one mole of H2O. Now, how did I get this conversion factor? Well, this is just the molar mass of water. 18.02 grams per mole is the molar mass of water. It's like the mass, but just the units are grams per mole. And since this is a conversion factor, I can write it upside down like this. And that allows me, I'll show it in red, to cancel my units of grams, and now I'm left with moles of H2O, one mole of H2O. Once I've got moles of H2O, well now I want to know how many particles there are, specifically how many molecules of water. So if I multiply by Avogadro's number, remember the units for that are particles per mole. Particles per mole. So now I can say in every one mole of water, every bundle of water I have, I have 6.022 times 10 to the 23 molecules. And this will tell me exactly how many molecules of water I have. And I was able to do that just by using two different conversion factors, the molar mass and Avogadro's number. And with these two conversion factors, because they are conversion factors, I was able to find how many molecules of water were in 18 grams of water. Let's work it out. And I'm going to do it in two steps. I'm going to do this one first to show you that it canceled and got me one mole. And then I'll multiply that at the end. So let's do 18 divided by 18.02 first. Now, you shouldn't round along the way, but when you plug it into your calculator, you should get that's about 1.0 moles. Specifically, it's 0.99889 moles. But we'll say 1.0 moles of water, because my grams canceled to give me moles. And now I'm multiplying by Avogadro's number. So I'll take that answer and multiply by 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. And now, well, gee, I get 6.0. So that answer is going to be 6.0 with the right number of significant digits. Remember, this number has two significant digits, and all of these have four, so this answer needs to have the same as the least amount, which is two. So my answer is 
times 10 to the 23. And you'll see that at the end on your calculator. Mine says E23. And that's how I know that it's times 10 to the 23. And my units are in molecules. So, of water. So it's specifically molecules of H2O. So if you went to your balance and you weighed out 18 grams of water, that's how many molecules of water you'd have. And that is the power of molar mass in Avogadro's number. That's what it can tell us. So let's do a different example. I'm going to erase this now. And let's go the other way. Let's say, oh, I don't know. Let's use salt. I used to use sodium chloride. Let's pretend I had, I don't know, 5.0 times 10 to the 26 mm, formula units of salt. Um, formula unit is like a molecule. Formula units of NaCl. So you can imagine 5.0 times 10 to the 26 little NaCl molecules. So there's like um, that many of these, a very large number. And I want to know how much that weighs. What is the mass? In fact, this is how I would ask the question. What is the mass in grams of 5.0 times 10 to the 26 formula units of sodium chloride, NaCl. Well, this will take two steps. First, we need to get to moles, because we need to bundle up these formula units, these really small particles, into a bundle that's more manageable. And that bundle is the mole. So the first step we need to do is, I'll keep that actually like this. I'll keep that up here. And the first step we need to do is use Avogadro's number to get from formula units to moles. So the first step we're going to do is 5.0 times 10 to the 26 formula unit. I'm just going to abbreviate that, of NaCl. Then we'll multiply by this conversion factor. And formula units are my particle. So that's what I'll put for particles. That's how the particles works in Avogadro's number. So I'll put 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd formula units of NaCl, that's how many formula units are in one mole of NaCl. Now, we could do this all in one long step, but I'm going to do it in two steps to show you how many moles of NaCl do I have. That's not quite what it's asking, but it's one step in that direction. So I'll take 5 times 10 to the 26th, and then I'm dividing by Avogadro's number, 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. And I get 830. And with correct sig figs, yeah, it's 830. 830 moles of NaCl. Wow, that's a lot of sodium chloride. So remember that this is a mole of water. And this is a mole of sugar. So it's kind of like, you know, you can imagine like a little handful. But 830 moles of sodium chloride? Gee, that's a lot of sodium chloride. That might be the entire shelf of salt in a uh, grocery store. But moles are still kind of abstract. Those are my bundle. Knowing how much it weighs gives me a good idea of how much sodium chloride I have. And to do that, I need the molar mass of sodium chloride. So let's calculate the molar mass of sodium chloride. I'm going to do that right here. Molar mass of NaCl. Well, that means it's going to be the molar mass of sodium plus the molar mass of chlorine. There's one of sodium and one of chlorine. Sodium is right here on the periodic table, and its molar mass is 22.99 grams per mole. That's the molar mass of sodium. Chlorine is over here on the periodic table, and its molar mass is 35.45 grams per mole. So to get the molar mass of sodium chloride, we'll just add those together. And since they both have two decimal places and we're adding, we can go to the two decimal places there. 22.99 plus 35.45 equals 58.44 grams per mole. That is the molar mass of sodium chloride. Now I can use this to convert from moles to grams. So I'll start with my 830 moles. I'll start right here. And you shouldn't round along the way. You should just take whatever answer that is. 
and plug that straight back into your calculator. And that's what I'm going to do here, but I'm, I'm showing the rounded number. Don't round halfway through your calculation. 830 moles of sodium chloride, quite a few. And now I'm going to multiply by a conversion factor that gets me from moles to grams, which means moles needs to be on the bottom here and grams needs to be on top. So 58.44, 58.44, Four grams per mole, that's per one mole. And that's grams of NaCl and moles of NaCl. That's not as important. So I'm going to write it, but if you just write grams, that's fine. And it'll be important later. So moles of NaCl have canceled, and I'm left with grams. So now I have 58.4, oh, sorry. I got to multiply first. So I'm going to take 830, which is technically 830.2889. Um, times 58.44 grams per mole. And I'm going to round this to two significant digits. That's zero, remember, is not significant. And I got those two from really those two significant digits up there. So this answer with two significant digits is 49,000 grams of sodium chloride. Or, if you like, 49 kilograms of NaCl, and I like 49 kilograms. Um, if you're confused about that, that's just dividing by 1,000 to go from grams to kilograms. We learned that in the first unit. And that's how we're basing all this math off of, is just conversion factors. So that's how many grams or kilograms of sodium chloride are in that many kind of molecules. You can think about a formula unit like a molecule. That's how many grams that many molecules of sodium chloride weighs. And that is how we can convert between sodium chloride and, or sorry, between grams and moles and particles, the formula units or the atoms or the molecules. Um, and so there's going to be lots of practice on these. Um, and yeah, so there's a picture that I will probably have posted somewhere that will show you kind of the way to convert between them. And you can reference that as well if you're having trouble with this. Um, if you're having trouble calculating molar mass, go back and watch the previous video. If you're still not sure about what a mole really is, go back and watch the video before that. Cool, that's that. That's most of the end of the unit.